Our DataStorm satellite dish has been our primary form of internet access for nearly nine years, since we first got our RV. As technology marches on, it's become a bit dated, but we were reluctant to give it up because it was such an expensive investment and still works just fine. Then we spent some time with our friends Nikki and Jason of Gone with the Winds. Over several dinners, drinks, and lots of laughter, they prodded us to move firmly into the 21st century by getting a Millenicom MiFi device and ditching the dish. Of course, they were right, but now what do we do with the dish? And what about the holes removing it will leave behind? We'll show you how we patch them. Our roof is fiberglass, but you can use this technique on just about any type of RV roof, including TPO or EPDM material which are sometimes referred to as rubber roofs. After removing the dish, we had to get everything as clean as possible so that our repair would stick to the surface. After nine years, it was a real mess underneath the satellite dish base plate. We started with mineral spirits and finished with auto polishing compound, and it took a lot of elbow grease. But a rubber roof is more delicate than fiberglass and requires using a cleaner that's specifically designed for that material. Pouring mineral spirits on the way we did could cause the rubber to separate from the roof. So follow the cleaning directions from your manufacturer and try to get it as clean as you can. Once the roof is clean, we start by applying Dicor self-leveling lap sealant to each screw hole until they're all covered. Every RVer should have a tube of Dicor on board and inspect the roof periodically for signs of cracking, which old Dicor will do after long periods of exposure to weather and sunlight. We also need to reinstall the access cover where the satellite wires went down into the RV. Dicor is perfect for this job too. Just add a good bead of Dicor all the way around the opening, then put the cover back in place, install the screws, and finish with another layer of Dicor. This will level out nicely as it dries and keep any water from getting in. We could have been done at this point, but being as anal retentive as we are about details, we wanted to permanently seal the screw holes against water since they'll never be used again. And keeping water out of the RV is a seriously important goal because of all the damage it can cause. So after letting the die core dry overnight, we decided to add an additional barrier, Eternabond tape. This is the same tape that bonds the front and end caps of the RV to the roof. Be advised that you should take Eternabond's name seriously. Whatever you apply it to will be bonded for all eternity. It seals so powerfully that it can't be removed without an incredible amount of effort. Eternabond comes in various widths and it's pretty expensive. So we're using some six inch wide tape that we had left over from a previous project several years ago. The tape cuts easily with a household scissors. Once cut to size, remove the backing and carefully apply it to the roof. Be sure to place it exactly where you want it. Once stuck in place, it will never move again. Now use a small roller to apply pressure to the Eternabond, which activates the adhesive and really makes it permanent. We could have used either Dicor or Eternabond alone, but we had both available, so we used both. The consequences of water leaking into the interior of an RV can be so serious that we'd rather be safe than sorry. There's no way this roof will ever leak a drop. If you want to see how to check Dicor on your roof to prevent leaks before they start, you can watch our video all about that topic. And if you're looking for Dicor or Eternabond, we'll put links in the video description for where to buy them. And by the way, we sold our dish on Craigslist.